search and rescue personnel, hikers, park rangers, hunters, all of these people seem to be detailing horrific, strange, and bizarre accounts with things they can't explain. And in this episode, I am bringing you all a whopping 23 episodes. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Here we go. I was working in search and rescue, a veteran after about 12 years on the job. We were trained to deal with everything from lost hikers to knife wounds, broken bones, hypothermia, you name it. We got a call that there were two missing people who had called 911 saying they were lost and needed help getting back to their car. They said they could see the trail, but couldn't get to it because something was in their way. I took my team out and we started searching for them based on where they told dispatch they thought they were located. It took us about an hour of hiking through dense forest before we found them. They were standing in a small meadow, looking terrified. They said that whatever was blocking their path had left, but then came back while dispatch was trying to keep them on the line until we got there. We looked around for what could have been blocking their path, but didn't find anything unusual. With darkness approaching, I decided our best bet would be to head back towards our base camp, which wasn't too far away. As soon as I said this, one of my team members pointed out something moving across another meadow, maybe 200 yards away. At first glance, it appeared like three large animals walking upright, side by side, like some sort of weird parade. The sun hadn't set yet, so visibility wasn't an issue. These things looked very real, even though none of us knew what kind of animal walked upright like that. We briefly wondered if they could be bears, but quickly dismissed the idea. We decided our best course of action would be to go check these things out. Maybe they could give us some insight into what may have been blocking those people's path earlier. Off we went, heading towards these creatures who seemed oblivious to our presence. That alone was strange behavior for any wild animal especially considering how close we were getting and how big each creature appeared. But as soon as we got within about 50 yards, everything changed instantly. One second, those creatures are just minding their own business, walking along. The next second, they're all running straight towards each other, meeting up right in front of each other to form almost a perfect triangle shape. They kept running full speed ahead straight into the middle, creating some sort of portal-like opening between them before disappearing completely without a trace. Just grasses swaying gently back and forth where once stood three large animals. Everyone, including myself, freaked out. We ran over frantically, searching everywhere, thinking maybe this was some kind of trick, someone hiding to mess with us. But there was nothing. It's been many years now since then, Yet, every time someone mentions Portal, my mind immediately goes back to that day. I remember seeing those creatures disappear right before my eyes, without any explanation whatsoever. I was told to keep quiet about this particular case because the people involved were very high up in the government. I was told that if I said anything, they would make sure my career ended before it even started. At first, I didn't believe them, but then they showed me some documents that proved who these people were and what kind of power they had over me. I decided it was best not to say anything at all. I believe that there is a huge conspiracy to cover up many missing person cases in national parks under strange and mysterious circumstances because of the sheer number of cases that have been reported over the years. The fact that so many people go missing without a trace, often in very remote areas where it would be nearly impossible for someone to disappear without being noticed, is extremely suspicious. In addition, there have been numerous reports of strange and unexplained phenomena occurring in these same areas around the time when people go missing. These include sightings of UFOs, 
Bigfoot, and other cryptids, as well as reports of unusual lights and sounds coming from the woods. While some may dismiss these reports as nothing more than urban legends or hoaxes, I believe that they are worth investigating further. There is simply too much evidence to suggest that something very strange is going on here for us to ignore it any longer. Look, I firmly believe it is my mission to unveil as much of this information as possible to the public because I think that people have a right to know what is going on in their own backyards. The fact that so many people are going missing without a trace, often in very remote areas where it would be nearly impossible for someone to disappear without being noticed, is extremely suspicious. The more information we can uncover about these cases, the more likely it becomes that we will be able to identify patterns and find possible explanations for why these individuals are disappearing. In addition, by raising awareness about this issue, we can help ensure that law enforcement agencies take these cases seriously and do everything they can to try and locate the missing persons. In the X-Files, we see many strange and mysterious phenomena occurring in remote locations, including national parks. The show depicts alien abductions, government conspiracies, and other unexplained events that are eerily similar to what is happening in real life. I believe that there is a very good chance that many of these cases are real and have been covered up by the government for decades. I think it's far more likely that something very strange is going on here for us to ignore it any longer. We need to do everything we can to try and find answers so we can put an end to this nightmare once and for all. Let me first start off by saying that I'm a type of guy who's grown up making fun of people who talk about things like creatures or Bigfoot or any of that nonsense. However, I was eventually forced to change my mind. I could be wrong. I don't know if a Sasquatch or Bigfoot or whatever you want to call it is what I saw, but it was something that I never in a million years would have suspected hung out in the same forest that I've spent years and years hunting in. I'd also like to add real quick that I have no idea why some people have spent their whole lives in the woods and don't see these things and while others have continuous experiences. With that said, at the time of this experience, I was deer hunting in the forest by where I live. It's a fairly dense area with lots of trees and underbrush, so it can be hard to see very far. The first thing that struck me as odd was the silence. No birds chirping or squirrels running around like there usually are when I go out hunting. As I walked deeper into the woods, I began to feel like something was watching me. Every time I would turn around, there would be nothing there. But as soon as my back was turned, something felt off. After walking for about 15 minutes, things escalated beyond just that feeling of being watched. It now sounded like someone else's footsteps were following mine. This made me really nervous. Then, all of a sudden, right before sunset, a huge hairy creature jumped out from behind some bushes, over seven feet tall. Only later, after seeing details like long arms reaching down past its knees and claws protruding from its fingers and feet, a Sasquatch. The creature was very large and hairy, with a long face and a wide mouth that seemed full of sharp teeth. Its eyes were set deep in its head, almost like they were sunken back into the skull. It stood on two legs but hunched over slightly, as if trying to make itself smaller for some unknown reason. Its arms hung down past its knees, and both its hands and feet ended in claws that looked more like talons than regular human fingernails. The skin underneath all this hair appeared grayish-white. I couldn't see any genitals from my angle, but I know for sure that this thing definitely wasn't wearing any clothes. It was covered entirely in fur. I was so scared that I ran as fast as I could back to my truck. Something about those woods still seemed wrong. 
even after leaving them behind. However, when I went upstairs to my bedroom to change clothes before taking a shower, a strange, foul odor filled the room. It smelled like rotten eggs mixed with something else terrible. Who knows what kind of thing might be lurking around here now? The next day, we went back to that spot in the forest and found nothing unusual. But things still didn't feel right. I've never been back to that section of woods since because it's not safe. I don't know what was following me or why, but whatever it is, it knows where I live now. There's no telling if it will come here next time looking for something else. I just want to open up and say that what I experienced was very bizarre. Even now, as I recount this in this email, I feel so silly because, as I explain it, it just sounds ridiculous. However, I'm sure you are no stranger to these kinds of things. Anyway, my experience begins over 10 years ago. It was late spring of 2011. I had been camping out in the swamps for a couple of weeks which wasn't unusual for me, but the moon was full and bright, illuminating the area around me even though it wasn't directly overhead yet. Suddenly, I heard something coming towards my camp from about 30 yards away. Then, I saw this thing walking through some bushes. It looked like a tall man wearing all black clothing, its face hidden by a hoodie or jacket hood pulled up. He walked right past my tent seemingly oblivious, just continuing as if he didn't know where he wanted to go next. At first, I thought it could have been another camper, since many people come here for peace and quiet. But the way this person was dressed, completely in dark clothes, including their abnormally long face, and the lack of any light source made me feel uneasy. Anyone doing that at night must have bad intentions. The moment we made eye contact is hard to describe. Everything suddenly changed. The mood became darker, almost ominous. The creature was at least six feet tall, with a long, thin, pointed tail. Its skin was pale white with patches of what looked like scales. The head seemed to have a crest on top, possibly covered by the hoodie, and two small holes for nostrils. It didn't seem to have a nose. Worst of all were its eyes, black without pupils just pure darkness. Its arms seemed inhumanly long, with an extra joint near the elbow area, making them look almost double-jointed. The hands were the most unsettling, the fingertips large and with webbing along their length, giving them the appearance of claws. I had never felt so uneasy around another living creature, especially one that I hadn't seen up close before. Its movements were unnatural, even the automatic ones we make without thinking. The face seemed almost reptilian, like a humanoid version of an Argonian race from the video game Skyrim. It had the two small nostril holes, but no nose that I could see. Its head was covered by the hoodie. While looking at each other, a strange sensation came over me. It wasn't like being hypnotized, as my mind was still clear but there was something unnatural about it. It was as if he'd cast a spell on himself that affected those around him, causing the world to slow down and everything to feel off kilter. Things went very dark for a moment before returning to normal again. It's hard to put into words how disorienting this experience was, especially since it's never happened to me before, and I don't know anyone else who has had something similar happen to them. I never believed in anything supernatural or paranormal. Everything in my life could be explained using science and logic. I don't believe in any sort of god, devil, or higher power. So, this experience was a complete shock to my entire belief system. It's still difficult for me to talk about what I saw. There's nothing else like it, which makes it hard to put into words exactly how I feel. But even now, just thinking back on the emotions of that encounter, the confusion when everything went dark and the world slowed down, and the feeling afterward of being very vulnerable and exposed. I'm not sure if anyone would believe something like this really happened, so 
I've chosen to keep quiet for the most part. I'm going to be blunt about what I saw, or what I believe I saw, and say that I think it might have been a reptilian being. What are your thoughts, if any? When I was a child, we were visiting my dad's family on the Navajo Nation. They lived in a small town that had no running water or electricity. My cousins and I would go out into the fields to play, but our parents always warned us not to go too far because there were skinwalkers out there. One day, while we were playing hide-and-seek with some other kids from the area, one of them came up behind me and grabbed me by the arm. He told me that he wanted to show me something cool and took off running towards a nearby hill. As soon as he started dragging me away from everyone else, I could tell that something was wrong. I tried to get him to stop by pulling back and yelling, but it didn't do any good. The next thing I knew, we were standing at the top of this hill, looking down into an old mine shaft. It was pitch black inside, except for a faint glow coming from deep within. The boy let go of my arm and turned around to get a better look. Suddenly, his eyes went wide with fear. This is where things start getting weird. I remember feeling like someone or something had just entered my body. Everything around us, including ourselves, seemed frozen solid, yet still alive somehow. It felt as if time itself stopped moving. Then, bright lights appeared everywhere, making it hard for us to even blink. We both stood there, staring straight ahead, unable to speak. Everything seemed so different now. The best way I can describe what it felt like is that this powerful negative energy had actually gone into my very being. It was a very electrical kind of feeling, like my whole body was buzzing. I'm sorry, but it's hard to describe, but it didn't feel right. Dare I say I didn't have control of myself, but I don't know if I want to take it that far. However, whatever this event was, it would lead into the next part of our story, and I want to explain why this is relevant. Okay, now on to the next part of the story where everything ties in. I'm not sure what to make of it, but maybe you can. Years later, I was camping in a national forest near the Navajo Nation. I had been there for about three days, and everything seemed normal until one night when I heard something outside my tent. At first, it sounded like an animal, but then it started to sound more human-like with heavy breathing and footsteps. It got closer, so close that when I looked out of the tent flap, all I could see were two glowing red eyes staring back at me from inches away. The next thing I know, I'm lying on the ground, completely paralyzed. The creature then began speaking to me telepathically. It also told me that I will die tomorrow morning at precisely 10 o'clock sharp, pointing its finger towards the sky. The best way I can describe what I saw was this large shadow-like entity. It seemed to take a physical form even though it appeared to be this organized, articulate-shaped shadow. The way it held its arm and hand up to the sky was the same way in which you see the popular Baphomet illustration. Two fingers pointed up with the ring and pinky finger folded into the palm and the thumb extended. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with this at all. Within seconds, what I can only describe as this deafening, loud ringing took over my whole being and that vibrational sensation came over my body again. This is where I lost consciousness and woke up again in my tent the following morning. I felt incredibly nauseous and sick to my stomach. I decided it was a good idea to head back home because I had no idea what had happened, or maybe I just hallucinated or dreamed everything. I got a call from my uncle at about 9 o'clock this morning asking me if I wanted to go with him out of state for something that I can't remember what he had asked. Anyway, I declined saying I just really didn't feel like going. He then gave me a hard time because apparently a few weeks ago he had told me about it in which I agreed to go with him. I had no memory of that conversation and so he gave me a hard time for backing out, but whatever. 
Now get this, he apparently got in a really bad car accident somewhere around 10.30 to 11 o'clock in the morning and would eventually pass away only days later in the hospital. I was supposed to be with him in his truck. I should have been the one to die as well. Did I somehow avoid my death by not going with him? Was that entity showing up to warn me? Just an FYI, I was never close with my uncle, and he was quite the jerk to say the least. I still tried to do things with him and spend time with them just because he was family, but I do feel guilty sometimes about not feeling anything regarding to his death. I feel like I'm rambling. I'm just looking for questions regarding what I experienced. I spent over 14 years in search and rescue. We got called out on a Friday afternoon for a lost hiker, gone for days, alone, inexperienced, and with only one night's supplies. Not a good start. We searched near his car, but the first day turned up nothing. We camped on site to save precious daylight. Next day, still no sign of him. We expanded our search figuring he must have gotten disoriented. I was with my partner and two other groups a few miles apart when a frantic call crackled over the radio. They'd found something strange, off trail in a valley, but couldn't make it out from a distance. My partner told them to hold position, then radio dispatch and the rest of us. We converged on their coordinates careful not to get lost in the thick brush and valleys that cut off our sight lines. After nearly an hour downhill, we reached the spot, and that's when it hit us. Something was deeply wrong. It was a huge clearing, a meadow surrounded by trees, the kind of place you wouldn't expect to get lost in. No signs of struggle, nothing. We were baffled. Just as we were about to split up again, another group radioed in. They'd found him, alive but barely. Face down, soaked in blood, his skin eerily pale. I'll never forget the sight of his lifeless eyes staring back at me in the flashlight beam. I was one of the first to reach him, and my partner immediately started treating his wounds. I began searching for clues as to what had happened. That's when I noticed something strange, a line of footprints in the dirt, heading straight towards him, but none leading away. It looked like he'd been dropped from above, but that made no sense. There were no helicopters or planes nearby, and we would have heard them anyway. As we worked on him, another team radioed in with an even more bizarre discovery. They'd found a second set of tracks circling the meadow, they seemed human at first glance, but were definitely not too big and oddly shaped. We searched for hours after that until nightfall forced us back into our tents. We didn't sleep much. Everyone was unnerved by this whole situation. The next day brought more questions than answers. Why hadn't anyone seen anything? Why did it look like he'd been dropped out of thin air? And who or what could have done this? But then, things got worse. A few days later, dispatch called us all together again. They wanted to talk about what happened up there. I don't know what those things were, but I do know that they weren't human, and I'm not the only one who thinks so. A few years later, someone sent me an article about David Paul Lighty's book, Missing 411. It was then that everything clicked into place for me. These creatures had sinister intentions and knew exactly how to get away with it. The hiker survived his ordeal, but he's never been the same since. He refuses to talk about what happened up there or even acknowledge our existence when we try reaching out to him through friends of friends who still live in town near where he grew up before all this started happening back then. Now, I worked with a ranger who had been in the field for over 30 years. He was one of the most experienced people I'd ever met, and he taught me everything I know about search and rescue. He's seen some strange things too, not just what happened up there, but also on other cases where we've gone out together looking for missing hikers or campers and never found them. One time, 
he told me that they were tracking someone who went missing near an old mine shaft, when all of a sudden, their radio started going crazy with static before cutting out completely. He said that he looked up and saw a large UFO craft hovering over the mine shaft. It was completely silent, but there were lights flashing on its underside like some kind of signal beacon or something. The ranger told me that he felt an overwhelming sense of dread wash over him as soon as it appeared in front of them. Then everything went dark for a few seconds before his radio came back online again. Only this time, all their batteries had been drained dry. After everything that's happened, I can't stress enough how important it is to go into the woods prepared and be very aware of your surroundings at all times. The only reason we were able to find him alive was because he had a whistle on his keychain, which he used as soon as we got close enough for him to hear us coming through the brush. If you're ever out there alone or with friends, always make sure someone knows where you are going so they know when if something happens, like getting lost before it's too late. I live in Southern Illinois and there's a very large national forest near me. I have 10 acres of land with a small farm on it. My house sits about 100 yards from the tree line that leads into the national forest. One night, around midnight, I was turning in my chickens when I heard an odd noise coming from the woods to my back and right. It sounded like something was being dragged through leaves and brush, but the sound wasn't continuous as you'd expect for a regular animal, the noise would stop for a moment, then start again, as if whatever was making it had turned around and gone back the way it came. This went on for several minutes until I shined my flashlight in its direction, hoping to catch the critter red-handed. But when my light hit its face, everything froze. It looked at me with these bright red eyes. It stood up on two legs like a human, but instead of hands, it had paws, huge paws covered in dark brown fur. I believe this entity was a dog man because of its appearance. Though I've seen many coyotes, none have ever had red eyes or been as large as this creature. Its face was wolf-like, pointed ears and snout. The fur on its head was short, but the rest of its body was covered in long, shaggy hair with tufts around the joints. The real clincher, though, was when it turned away from me after what felt like an eternity, but was probably only 10 seconds. This creature looked directly into my eyes, let out this nasty, growling snarl, turned around and flung its body into the tree line. I've never heard as loud as a crashing sound as I heard right there. It reminded me of somebody driving machinery into the woods, just all this ruckus and noise. And here I was, no weapons, a flashlight, surrounded by chickens. Looking back on it, it was kind of hilarious with just how defenseless I was. But I'll tell you what, and the moment this was no laughing matter, I was terrified. I couldn't sleep for weeks because every time I closed my eyes, I saw those red eyes and that wolf-like face. Even now, 10 years later, if I hear any noise coming from the woods, or if something wakes me up in the middle of the night, like a dog barking, I immediately start thinking about that creature. And for a while there, any time I got near the wood lines or had to go tend my chickens, I would just feel this paralyzing fear take over. It felt akin to being cast to a group of lions, a group of lions that were just beyond the tall grass that you couldn't see were there, but you knew it. I felt like at any moment I could be grabbed and ripped apart and nobody would ever know what happened to me. It feels like someone has their hand on my chest, squeezing hard while trying to rip out my insides. I forgot to mention this originally, but I actually called the police since I was so scared. They blew me off and didn't believe me, saying it was probably just a coyote. They promised to send someone out, but no one ever came. I've never told anyone about what I saw, not even my husband, because I'm afraid he'll think I'm crazy. But then, one day, while we were out in the woods cutting firewood, he asked if there had been any weird noises coming from the woods. I said no, 
and he just gave me this strange look before telling me how something had scared off all the deer earlier that morning. After some more conversation between him and I, I eventually broke down and tell him what I had been experiencing and what I saw that evening. Now, I just want to say this. My husband is a tough son of a gun. He always has been. The man has not had an easy life, and his childhood was extremely tough. I think that's what ultimately shaped him into the hard man he is. This is a person who I've seen in some pretty extreme situations and has not shown fear. But to see the blood drain out of this man's face as I'm telling him what I saw told me everything I needed to know. He then told me that it's been around on our property for a while, but he was too afraid to say anything to me because he didn't want me to feel scared. As I'm writing this, we're still having experiences quite often with this thing. I just hope it doesn't get brave and try to come up to the house. Fortunately for us, we are very well armed. Anyway, just thought I would share this experience in case anybody has any advice. Thanks anyway. Two of my friends and I were camping in the Shawnee National Forest. We had been there for a few days. It was extremely dark, but we had flashlights, so it wasn't too bad. We were walking down one of the trails that we hadn't gone down yet when we all got this weird feeling like something was watching us. We just brushed it off as being paranoid because there are bears in those woods and they can be dangerous if you're not careful. About an hour into our walk, one of my friends pointed out some strange noises coming from behind us. It sounded like something moving through the trees very quickly, but none of us could see anything with our lights or hear any footsteps on the ground. The sounds kept getting closer until suddenly they stopped completely right behind me. I turned around to look, but didn't see anything at first glance. That's when I noticed two red, glowing eyes staring back at me from about six feet away. The creature these eyes belonged to was standing upright like a man would, on its hind legs, except much taller than any human I've ever seen before. We pretty quickly got out of there and got back to camp. Now fast forward about an hour and a half. I was just sitting on a log in front of our campfire. My friends were both standing next to me and we were all talking about how strange it felt out there when the noises started. I remember feeling very cold, even though I had my jacket on. But that could have been because it was around 45 degrees outside at the time. That's when everything went silent, except for its breathing, which sounded more like growling than anything else. I was completely frozen in shock at first. My friends were both yelling for me to run away from it, so we all started running as fast as possible. We stayed up all night long, just talking about what happened and trying to figure out what kind of animal could have made those noises. The creature's face was completely hairless, except for a few patches of dark red fur around its eyes and mouth. It had no nose, just two small holes where its nose should have been. The eyes themselves were very large and round with black pupils. Its mouth didn't seem to move when it growled or made any other noises. I don't know for sure, but I think it was probably just curious about us because we were the only ones out at that time of night. We didn't smell like food or anything else that would have attracted a predator. The noises stopped once we left making me believe whatever made them followed us until it got close enough to see what we were. Also, I'm part Apache on my mother's side. My grandmother and her sister are both full-blooded Apaches from Oklahoma who moved to Texas when they were younger. My family has always been very spiritual, not religious, in the sense that we believe there is more to this world than what can be seen with our eyes or touched by our hands. When I told my grandmother and her sister about what happened, they said it sounded like an evil spirit of some kind was following us. I apologize for not being the best writer, but if you have any questions about anything that I've told you, just feel free to ask.
I've had a handful of strange experiences that I can't explain in my life, but I don't have time to tell you all of them today. However, I will focus on a few that I think you will find very interesting. I guess I can start things off back in 1985 when I was only 15 and I had what I believed to be a genuine Bigfoot experience. I had been hunting with my father and grandfather since I was about 10, so by this time, I was very familiar with the woods and all of its sounds. We were in a spot that we always hunted every year for elk season near sunset on opening day, Saturday. He said they would be back before dark, but if anything came out for me to shoot it, because they would probably still be walking when it got dark. So there I sat, not even 100 yards from where our truck was parked, just sitting up against a tree facing downhill into an open area surrounded by trees on both sides of me. I could see everything within about 200-300 yards pretty clearly, except for right behind me, which is straight uphill through thick brush, trees, berries, etc. The sun started setting behind some clouds over towards the St. Helens side, so it got darker. At this point, it's almost completely dark outside now, although you can still make out shapes here and there, like silhouettes against the sky. So I'm just sitting there, watching downhill, waiting for something big, like an elk or bear, then suddenly I hear what sounds like something huge running directly behind me, heading downhill towards where I've been looking. My heart starts racing faster than ever before. Maybe it's Bigfoot himself coming after me. I'm already feeling scared as hell because nobody is anywhere close by, and I've never heard anything run that fast or loud in these woods before. I start slowly turning around using only my eyes, hoping whatever it is will go away if it sees I'm not worth chasing. At first glance, there's nothing. Then a second glance reveals nothing at all except for a huge black shapeless figure just standing there, staring right back into my eyes. It was about as tall as the tree I'm leaning against and probably twice as wide. At first. I'd say it's standing less than 10 feet away, though it's hard to tell exactly how far, then, with each new glance, it's getting closer, until finally it's literally breathing down my neck. This happens within seconds, so keep in mind how fast everything happened. Next thing I remember, I'm screaming bloody murder while taking off running downhill faster than ever before in my life. It's impossible to describe accurately other than sheer terror, but I eventually calmed down somewhat, realizing nobody could hear my screams. I believe that these things are living underground in the lava tubes under the Pacific Northwest. I have found and explored many of them over the years while hiking through forests and mountainsides. Some go deep down into the earth, others not so much, but regardless, they all seem like perfect hiding spots for any kind of creature seeking escape from prying eyes above ground. Plus, it makes sense if you think about it logically. Why else wouldn't we see more evidence pointing towards their existence I've heard stories about people going missing in national forests and other places where these things are known to live. I know for a fact that they do exist because I have seen them myself with my own eyes on two separate occasions now, so there's no doubt in my mind anymore. I would like to add that I'm not trying to scare anyone with these stories. I just want people to know the truth about what goes on outside sometimes so they can be prepared if they ever find themselves alone out there someday. It's better knowing something exists rather than being caught off guard by it when you least expect it. So please take this information seriously, but don't let fear control your life. Remember, we're talking about real living creatures here, not monsters from movies or TV shows. I have a couple of very interesting insights I'd like to share with you. And if you decide to read this on your YouTube channel, I would appreciate any insights or commentary your audience might add. To make a long story short, I believe I've been followed by a Mothman type entity. That's really the only way I know how to describe it. It was 1999 and I was a young mother living in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. 
my son was born on Halloween night at the hospital. Since we lived about 30 minutes away, we had to drive home that night. When we got home, my husband and I decided it would be best for him to stay with me, as he had work in the morning. We were both very tired, but tried our best to get some sleep before our new baby woke up again. Not easy for first-time parents. I remember looking out my bedroom window around midnight because I couldn't sleep. Even though there weren't any lights outside except for ours, it should have been pitch black. Instead, everything seemed like daylight outside, almost as if someone turned on a huge spotlight. It didn't make sense. Nothing could have caused this much light without drawing attention. Everyone else's houses looked just fine, including those across town. They wouldn't even notice anything wrong unless they were already awake. Suddenly, everything went dark again. Now, there were strange sounds coming from all around us, followed by what sounded like an explosion. After that, there was complete silence. My husband said, what the hell is going on? Right then, huge birds flew past his car window, making screeching noises like owls sometimes do, which still gives me chills. We never did find out exactly what happened. Many people thought maybe some kind of military aircraft crashed nearby. Others believed differently. I was living in a small town called Pomeroy, Ohio, back in early 2006. My sister had just gotten married about six months prior to her death, so she and her husband lived there too. One night, I woke up around 3 o'clock feeling very restless. That wasn't normal for me. I usually sleep soundly through the night. Anyway, when I got out of bed, I decided to check on everyone to make sure everything seemed okay before trying to go back to sleep. I went into each bedroom, checking on the kids, then headed down the hall towards the kitchen. That's when I noticed this huge bird-like creature standing outside the window looking right at me. It must have been over seven feet tall, its head towering above the roof line. Its shoulders looked wider than any man's, and its body was covered with fur instead of feathers. It didn't move, just stood there staring directly into my eyes without blinking. It made me feel incredibly uncomfortable, even though I couldn't see its face clearly in the darkness. There weren't any sounds coming from anywhere nearby. Then, that stopped, leaving only eerie silence everywhere. I'm still not sure exactly what kind of creature it might be. My heart started pounding really fast. I ran down the hallway towards the bedrooms yelling, Wake up, everybody! Then, I heard a loud thud, followed by a crash as it flew off. It never returned, nor has anyone seen anything similar since, even though this happened nearly 16 years ago. I believe that there is a connection between the supernatural and how these entities know when a person is going to die. I don't have any scientific evidence, but it's just something I've always felt. After my sister died, everything changed, making me feel even more strongly about this. Mothman showed up right before her death, which makes me think this must be true. Nobody else could explain why he appeared here, except maybe some kind of military experiment gone wrong. I have no idea what Mothman is or why he shows up when something bad's about to happen, but it definitely seems like there must be some kind of connection between the supernatural and how these entities know when someone will die. I've heard people say that maybe they can sense energy somehow. It would explain why I always feel so restless right before anything happens, whether good or bad, but it still doesn't make much sense. No one knows for sure, other than the fact it keeps happening without fail. It makes me wonder if we'll ever figure out exactly what's going on here. Hey, I've been a big fan of you and your YouTube channels for a while, and I wanted to take the chance to share my personal experiences with you. If you choose to read this, please redact my name out of it, because I currently work in a very large firm, and I don't want this being attached to me or my reputation at all. 
You already understand this, I'm sure. I'll do my best to try and start back from the beginning. If there's anything that doesn't make sense, please feel free to ask and follow up emails. I'll do my best. I had just moved to a new state with my family, and we were still living in our temporary home. I was 12 at the time. My parents were out on a date night. So me, my brother, 16, and sister, 14, were all home alone. We heard some dogs barking outside, which wasn't uncommon because there are several houses near us that have dogs. However, this went on for longer than usual. Then, suddenly, everything went silent as if every dog in the neighborhood stopped barking at once. It freaked us out. But we didn't think too much of it until after what happened next. My brother looked outside through the window to see if he could see anything strange. That's when he saw something dart past him, thinking maybe his eyes were playing tricks on him or something. Suddenly, an extremely tall, dark figure ran across our yard. He told me and my sister what he saw. Before we could process it, we all decided to look outside together, hoping that whatever it was would be gone by now. Instead, it seemed like there were even more of them. They weren't as big as the first one, but they definitely weren't small either. They almost looked like children's shadows running around. We watched them run around for a few minutes, trying to make sense of what we saw. Then, one of them noticed us looking at them through the window. They all stopped moving, completely still, staring right back up at us without making any noise whatsoever. It felt like hours passed before finally someone broke eye contact, breaking their trance-like gaze upon us. This allowed everyone else to do the same before turning away and disappearing into thin air. Afterwards, none of us wanted to go to sleep, knowing these things might come inside the house while we were sleeping. We eventually fell asleep anyway, but didn't get good rest due to the lingering fear knowing those entities could return any time and do harm. This happened near the Cherokee National Forest in Tennessee. There are many burial mounds throughout this forest that have been discovered and excavated over the years, but there are also a lot of them still out there waiting to be found. My family has lived on this land for generations, so we know where some of these mounds are located. Even if you don't know exactly where they might be, it's still possible to stumble upon one while walking through the woods. Most people who go hiking around here aren't looking specifically for Native American artifacts or anything like that. I think what happened was my brother saw something outside because he had just moved into his new room. This room used to belong to me before I got older and needed more space. He never really spent much time inside the house, except during meals and sleeping, which means he would spend the majority of his day playing outside. Now, I've had a lot of strange things happen to me throughout my life, but nothing like this before. The only other time I ever saw something that looked remotely similar was when I was around 10 years old. This happened while we were living in another state, Pennsylvania. We used to have an old barn on our property where we would play hide and seek sometimes at night. There wasn't much else to do out there except for watching TV or reading books. One day after school, I decided to go exploring inside the barn. I hadn't done so yet since moving into this house a few months earlier. However, I soon regretted doing this once I got close enough to see what appeared to be two very tall, dark figures standing side by side near the entranceway leading from outside into the building itself. They didn't move an inch, as if they were made out of stone statues frozen in place forever. I believe in God and Christianity. I don't know what these entities are, but they seem to be some sort of demonic spirits or something like that. When you see them face to face, it feels as if your soul is being sucked out through your eyes. It's hard to explain unless you've experienced this yourself before, which I hope never happens again. The only way I can describe how I felt after seeing those things was feeling drained, completely empty inside. It was almost like someone had taken everything away from me, leaving nothing behind 
except for a hollow shell waiting to be filled up with whatever might come next. It wasn't until later on, during my teenage years, when I started reading more about various religious beliefs, including Christianity, that I began to understand why this happened back then. However, I still couldn't fully comprehend exactly what took place. Most websites focused primarily upon different types of demons rather than other supernatural beings such as shadow people, etc. It's been almost 10 years since that night, and I still don't know what those things were or why they came around our house. We moved away from there shortly after the incident because my parents wanted to get us as far away from it as possible. Even now, sometimes when walking through woods, I can feel like something might be watching me, especially at night. It makes it difficult to sleep well, knowing this could happen again any time without warning if the opportunity arises. I hope I never have to experience anything similar ever again. However, if I do, I will try to remember to stay strong no matter how scary things might seem. I won't let fear take over completely. I worked as a search and rescue officer for a number of years in several different national parks, and most of those jobs are pretty much what you'd expect. We get a call about missing persons or someone who is overdue, and we do our best to find them. I was part of four full-body recoveries and helped with the rescue part of finding people over 50 times. I'm not saying that there are spooks out there kidnapping hapless hikers looking for their car keys, and if they're lucky enough to be chosen by Bigfoot, then so be it. But there definitely were some cases that made me scratch my head. My very first SR job was in Glacier National Park. I can't remember the exact year, but it was sometime around 2000. There aren't many reported cases from this park because rangers patrol only small sections due to limited resources. The rugged interior is rarely seen by humans. The person on duty isn't technically supposed to leave until he's been relieved by his replacement, but they were all friends of mine at this point, so we didn't think anyone would tell. After about an hour of hiking through the woods following their directions, we started seeing trees with odd structures carved into them, mostly little X shapes where the branches had been removed like saplings, also single branch curves attached to tree trunks facing away from us. We saw two separate spots along these lines where broken sticks were stuck upright into the ground in pairs next to each other. These kinds of things aren't super unusual. Most likely, it's bored kids or just apophenia making people see patterns in randomness. That said though, the second pair wasn't just leaning against each other. They were tied together with grass string. There's no way any natural process could have caused that. Well, now I'm officially creeped out. So, we kept going down this trail, hoping these markers meant we weren't getting lost. After another couple of miles walking downhill through thick forest, everything seemed brighter ahead as if someone had turned on a light. It took me longer than usual before my brain finally registered what I was seeing. And when it did, all five hairs on my neck stood straight up. Two perfectly parallel rows lined either side, stretching back as far as I could see. This looked exactly like something you'd see lining both sides of train tracks. But here's the thing, this area doesn't have trains. In fact, besides roads and trails, there isn't anything remotely close enough resembling human civilization within hundreds of miles. I've heard stories about how you don't know fear until you're being chased by something. But let me tell you right now, that primal terror instinct kicks off long before anything actually happens. If your hair ever stands up while alone outside, pay attention. Your subconscious mind knows what's up well before your conscious mind does. At this point, even though nothing overtly threatening had happened yet, every cell in my body screamed at me. We walked faster, trying not to show panic. 
just when I thought I couldn't stand any more tension, one guy stopped dead. Did somebody hear that? Hear what? It sounded like he trailed off, listening intently. Nothing. Silence. I felt myself relax slightly. Must have been nothing. I spoke more confidently than I felt. Yeah, probably. He nodded in agreement, but he stayed still, straining his ears. As soon as I opened my mouth to say, let's go, there came the sound of crashing brush behind us. Then, silence again. The guy whirled around, gun drawn, scanning the trees. I grabbed my rifle, readying myself. Crickets chirped, birds sang, leaves rustled gently in the breeze. All normal sounds returning, a few seconds later, the third member appeared, carrying backpacks nonchalantly, whistling tunelessly. What? What the hell? Where'd he come from? Then, realization hit him too. He hadn't noticed anything strange until our reaction drew attention. For him, everything was normal. Like whatever freaky thing affected us never happened. Dude must have wandered off for a bathroom break, totally oblivious to the rest. He glanced nervously between our guns and confused expressions, mind trained directly at center mass. The other guys relaxed their grip too, keeping weapons handy. Someone cleared their throat, breaking the awkward standoff. We quickly explained the situation, asking if anyone else heard the crash or saw whoever ran past. None did. Whatever weirdness went down only affected the three involved. Perhaps some gas leak caused a shared hallucination, or a temporary wormhole spat alternate reality dudes to wander the wrong universe. They left without further incident. The rest of the day passed uneventfully, as did the remaining two days. About halfway back, near the same spot, we smelled an awful stench rotting meat wafting faintly on the breeze. None of us acknowledged the odor aloud, although everyone wrinkled their noses whenever the wind shifted and carried a stronger scent. Even stranger, the dog showed no interest, unlike its normal behavior of ignoring obvious signs of carry-on nearby. Now the animal acted cautious, circled constantly with its nose twitching the air. It sniffed the ground cautiously, occasionally growling a low warning rumble deep in its chest, fur bristling along its ridge. On high alert, it continued warily forward, avoiding the thickest brush until the smell faded gradually, lessening in intensity. On the last day, it was completely gone by the time we returned to the parking lot. After turning in our gear and heading home that night, exhausted, I fell asleep instantly in bed. Anyway, sorry for dragging out the story. Hopefully, I answered your questions helpfully. I'm a very logical and rational thinking person. I have a high level of intelligence, but I'm also extremely analytical and not at all given to fantasy or imagination. But there's clearly something more than meets the eye that's going on in these parks. The story begins in the summer of 2015. My brother and I were both living with our parents at the time, so we would often go camping with them during school breaks or on weekends when they had off from work. We always went to state parks because they were close by and easy for us to get to. We had been going to this particular park since we were kids and knew it very well. On Friday afternoon, my dad dropped us off at one of the campsites near a lake. He said he'd meet up with us later that night after work. My mom was supposed to come along too, but she ended up not being able to make it. So, my brother and I set up camp ourselves, which wasn't difficult since we've done it many times before. That day passed without any problems. The next morning, while fishing, I heard people talking about seeing large bat-like creatures flying around the area the previous nights. I didn't think much of it at first, but then that same evening is when everything happened. I was 19 years old at the time and my brother was 16. We were camping in a state park near West Virginia 
that we had been to several times before with our family. It wasn't a very big park, but it did have some nice hiking trails and a small lake where you could fish or swim. We had set up camp on Friday afternoon and spent most of the day fishing in the lake. That night, after dinner, we sat around the fire for a while before going to bed. About an hour later, I woke up because I heard something moving around outside our tent. At first, I thought it might be an animal looking for food, so I tried to ignore it and go back to sleep. But then, whatever it was started making this strange screeching sound that sounded like nothing I'd ever heard before. I woke my brother up because he's always been braver than me when it comes to stuff like this. He said he didn't know what kind of animal would make that noise, but he wanted me to come out there with him anyway. We grabbed flashlights from our backpacks. We each kept one flashlight in case of emergencies and went outside. As soon as we stepped out of the tent, we saw something huge fly overhead. It looked like some sort of bat-like creature, except much larger than any bat should be. It landed about 30 feet away from us in front of another campsite. There were two people sitting by their fire who also saw this thing land right next to them. They both screamed loudly, which caused my brother and me to run over towards them. This thing just stood there, staring at all four of us for about a minute without moving. Then, suddenly, it flew straight into the air again, making those same screeching noises. After a few minutes, everything seemed quiet again, so we decided to return to our own campsite. The other couple came along too. Everyone agreed to stay together through the rest of the night. My brother insisted on keeping watch while everyone slept even though no one asked him to do so. I don't think anyone actually got much sleep after all that happened. Morning came. My parents arrived early Saturday morning to check on how things were going. None of us stayed a second night. Well, I've always been a believer in the paranormal and strange creatures that are said to exist, but this experience definitely changed my thoughts on what's out there. I used to think it was just fun stories people made up for entertainment, but now I believe everything is a lie and we're not being told the truth about anything. It was the 4th of July and my wife and I decided to go camping in Grand Teton National Park. We'd been there before, but this time we wanted a new adventure. Instead of the popular campgrounds, we decided to hike further into the wilderness. After about an hour, we found the perfect spot. It was on top of a small hill, overlooking beautiful meadows. We were miles from anyone else. It felt like we had the whole place to ourselves. We set up our tent and cooked dinner over an open fire. After eating, we relaxed and talked as the night grew darker. Then... About an hour later, I saw something strange in the distance, a bright light shining down from above. At first, I thought it was a distant flashlight, but the light didn't come from any direction. It seemed to shine straight down on us. The light grew brighter and brighter until everything went totally white. After that, I don't remember anything until I woke up in our house two days later. I had no idea how we got there. I believe we experienced missing time. Here's why. When I woke up, I was wearing completely different clothes. Not dirty, but new and clean. Our tent had vanished without a trace. And worst of all, both my wife and I started having strange physical symptoms. Severe headaches that lasted for weeks. Random nausea and exhaustion, even though we were sleeping more than usual. Late at night, I'd hear noises like someone walking near the house, but no one would ever be there. I felt a constant, overwhelming sense of fear, even in my own home. All of this made us feel like something terrible must have happened in Grand Teton National Park. Less than a week after our trip, we were watching TV when the doorbell rang. My wife answered it, and I stayed on the couch. We weren't expecting anyone. 
on the doorstep were two men in black suits and sunglasses. They asked to come in, but my wife refused. We didn't know them, and it was late. The men said it was urgent that we speak with them about something recent. We let them in, and they sat on our couches facing us. They started asking about our camping trip, about waking up at home in different clothes, and about the physical symptoms and strange noises. They even asked about our family history of mental health issues. Josh, I have no idea what's going on. I'd love your opinion on this. I really appreciate your YouTube channels. They make it easier for people like my wife and me to share these experiences. I grew up in a small town in Montana and have always been an outdoorsman. I love to hunt, fish, camp, hike, you name it. My dad was the one who taught me everything about the great outdoors, and we spent a lot of time together doing all sorts of things outside. When I turned 14, he took me on my first camping trip to Glacier National Park for my birthday because it's such a beautiful place with lots of wildlife, and also because he knew how much I loved being out there. We were only planning on staying two nights, but after this experience happened, we ended up leaving early. It was 2005, and it was during this time that we were actually spending a lot of time in and around the lake. This is part of the reason that we were camping in a tent at the campground near Lake McDonald. It was about 9 o'clock p.m. when we heard something moving around our campsite. It sounded like footsteps, but they were heavy and slow, not like an animal running through the woods or anything like that. Then, all of a sudden, we saw them. They were standing there looking at us from across the road by this big pine tree. There were two of them, both over six feet tall with long tails that dragged on the ground behind them as they walked towards us. I remember thinking how weird it was because their legs looked so human-like. Their skin was dark, greenish-brown color with black spots all over it, and their eyes glowed yellow in the light from our lanterns. My dad grabbed his gun while I stood there staring at these things in shock. He told me to stay put while he went after them, but before he could even take one step towards them, they both turned around and ran off into the forest where we couldn't see anymore. We never found out what those things really were, but ever since then, I've been convinced that reptilian humanoids exist. I know during my research, someone had pointed out David Icke, but his theories, I don't really know what to think about them. He claims that reptilian humanoids exist and are living among us, right, and that they can shapeshift into other forms in order to hide from us which is why we haven't been able to find any evidence of their existence yet. I guess it's possible because after seeing those things back in 2005 with my dad and also hearing stories from other people who have seen similar creatures, there has got to be something going on out there. But at the same time, part of me feels like maybe he's just making all this stuff up so people will buy his books or whatever. I firmly believe that what I witnessed correlates to the vast amount of missing persons cases in national parks because it just makes sense. There are so many people who have gone missing over the years and nobody knows where they went or what happened to them. But if these reptilian humanoids exist and also shapeshift into other forms, then maybe they're kidnapping people for some reason? Maybe there's a cover-up going on too. I don't know. The only thing I can say is that ever since my dad and I saw those things back in 2005, we've both been very interested in learning more about this subject. I was 14 years old and on a camping trip with my family in West Virginia. We were staying at the Holly River State Park, which is located in Webster County. The park is very remote and surrounded by dense forest. On our second night there, we were sitting around the campfire when I heard something moving through the woods behind us. It sounded like footsteps, but they were much heavier than any animal I had ever heard before. 
My dad said it was probably just a deer or a bear and not to worry about it. A few minutes later, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. When I turned to look, I saw what looked like a large black dog standing on its hind legs about 50 feet away from me. It was staring right at me with bright yellow eyes that seemed to glow in the dark. I screamed and pointed at it as my parents turned around to see what was wrong. They both stood up and started yelling at whatever it was that they could hear them too. At this point, whatever this thing was took off running back into the woods, making an ungodly howling sound as it went. We packed up our stuff as fast as we could. I will try and do my best to describe the way this thing looked as accurately as possible. It was about seven feet tall and had a very muscular build. It looked like a cross between a wolf and an ape, with long, shaggy black fur covering its entire body. Its head was shaped like that of a dog, but it had pointed ears on top of its head. When I saw it, I felt pure terror. I have never been so scared in my life. The way this thing moved through the woods was unlike anything else I've ever seen before or since then either. It almost seemed to glide across the ground without making any noise at all. I don't know what it was or where it came from. Now, it's crazy is that my uncle had a very similar experience years ago long before this. He was out hunting in the woods near our house when he saw something moving through the trees about 100 yards away from him. He thought it might be a deer, so he raised his rifle and took aim at whatever it was that he could see. As soon as my uncle pulled the trigger, this thing let out an ear-piercing scream like nothing ever heard before. It sounded almost human, but not quite right somehow. When my uncle looked back up again after firing his gun, there wasn't anything there anymore. We don't know what it was or where it came from. My family and I are both in agreement that we are having encounters with what many know to be a dogman. These are not werewolves. I don't really care how we should classify them, though I just know that they have extreme potential for danger, and I feel like if we don't take it seriously, they might kill us. I was camping with my family in Yellowstone National Park. We were at a campsite near the Madison River, and I had gone for a walk along the riverbank. It was early evening, and the sun was just starting to set. As I walked along the riverbank, I noticed something strange in the sky. At first, it looked like a plane or helicopter flying overhead. But as I watched it more closely, I realized that it wasn't moving like any aircraft that I'd ever seen before. It moved slowly across the sky in an erratic pattern, almost like someone was drawing squiggly lines through the air with a pencil. The object itself seemed to be made of light. There were no wings or rotors on it at all. I stopped walking and stared up at this thing for several minutes until finally losing sight of it behind some trees. When we got back to our campsite later that night, my parents asked me what had taken me so long on my walk because they said they saw me leave about 20 minutes earlier than when I came back. I told them what I saw and they were both shocked. They said that I must have been seeing things because there was no way something like that could exist. I know what I saw though. It wasn't a plane or helicopter. It was definitely some kind of UFO. I don't know what to believe. I've never seen anything like this before, and it's hard for me to wrap my head around the idea that there might be some kind of conspiracy going on. But at the same time, I can't deny what I saw with my own eyes. It was definitely something out of the ordinary, something that doesn't fit into any category of known aircraft or natural phenomena. Okay, this is going to sound nuts, but I got to tell someone. You know, I'm not one to make stuff up, especially about the woods, but what I saw, it's messed up. Last weekend up in Chekhameja Nicolay, solo trip like always. Last night, heading back to my truck round 10 or something, 
thick pines up there, real dark, so I got the flashlight on. This doe comes out of nowhere, spooked as hell, and then BAM! This huge thing, I mean huge, comes out of the shadows, grabs the deer like it's a doll. I hear the deer make this awful noise. Thing turns, I get a good look. Eight feet easy, thick as anything, dark fur with this weird reddish glint in the light, and the face, flat like a man's but not, and those eyes. I froze, just stood there staring. Next thing I know, it's gone, just jumps over the trail and vanishes. I swear, I must have sat there shaking for ten minutes straight. Always thought those stories were BS, people seeing bears wrong or whatever, but after this, I don't know man. Something's out there, something big, something that ain't supposed to be. Look, I know this is a lot to take in, but I swear, I saw it clear as day. Maybe clearer, cause the light hit it weird. There was this oily sheen to its skin, like it was wet, and the smell… God, it smelled like a dead animal, but musky too, not something you forget. The way it moved, that's the part that sticks with me. Yeah, it was big, but quick for its size, like an athlete, you know? And those hands, they were huge, not paws, but with long fingers. Made me think, hell, this thing could climb trees, could be anywhere. I haven't slept right since. Keep seeing those eyes in the dark. Part of me still doesn't believe it, but the other part, the part that knows the woods, knows I saw something out there, something that shouldn't exist. I'm not one for those crazy YouTube channels or whatever, but after seeing that thing, it makes you think, what else is out there that they don't want us to know about? You hear the stories, those disappearances in national parks, the weird cattle mutilations, all hushed up and written off as animal attacks or lost hikers. Makes you wonder, maybe there's a connection, something they're trying to cover up. Maybe these things, whatever they are, they ain't just animals. Maybe there's more to them than we understand, some missing link, something that survived when it wasn't supposed to. Hell, you hear about those secret government bases out in the desert, who knows what kind of experiments they've been running out there. My uncle, he worked for the Forest Service back in the 70s, swore up and down he saw something weird out in the backcountry once, something huge and hairy. They told him it was a bear, but he knew better. Tried to tell people, and they laughed at him, made him feel crazy. Makes me wonder how many others have had the same experience, brushed off and silenced. I used to think the woods were safe, at least what I could understand. Big predators, sure, but nothing like this. Now, I'm not so sure. Makes you realize there's a whole other world out there, right under our noses, and maybe some things are better off left unknown. We were supposed to be having this amazing trip in Grand Teton, but now it feels like a horror movie. My boyfriend woke up to red eyes outside the tent, then this crazy vibration, and there was a creature there, watching him. I need to know if we're the only ones. We'd been camping for a couple of nights, nothing weird, you know, just enjoying the mountains and everything, but our dog, Killer, he's usually calm, but he was acting nervous all evening before this happened, whining, pacing around like he sensed something was wrong. My boyfriend woke up in the middle of the night, must have been really early morning, and saw those eyes at the tent flap. The vibrations started so intense he couldn't even scream, and the dog was going nuts under the covers. Then this thing, this creature, it just rose up into the tent. At first it was all blurry, but then he figured out to look at it with his peripheral vision and it was clear as day. It was this bat-looking creature that had black mist pouring off it, kind of like when you take something out of the freezer except the mist or whatever was black, he said. It had huge red eyes and this giant grinning mouth. The weirdest part was, it seemed amused at him, 
like it was all a big joke. Then, the vibration ramped up again, and he passed out. He woke up hours later. I was still asleep and had these rows of red dots all over his back. He felt like something violent had happened, but I had no idea. It's messed him up pretty bad. He's always loved camping, but now he's terrified of going back out there. You gotta understand, this whole thing is totally freaking him out. My boyfriend, he's the most practical, down-to-earth guy you'd ever meet. He's never been the type to believe in ghosts or aliens or any of that stuff. Always rolling his eyes whenever I'd get into one of your podcasts or something. But now, it's like he's seen something that's completely shattered how he thinks about the world. He's not really talking about it. Not in detail anyway. But I can tell he's replaying it over and over in his head, trying to figure it out. Sometimes at night, I hear him muttering to himself. Stuff like, it wasn't real, or how is that even possible? It breaks my heart because I know there's nothing I can say to make it better. All I can do is be there for him, even though I'm honestly just as freaked out as he is. I don't even know where to begin with this, but I'm starting to think what we saw out there wasn't just some weird animal. Think about it. Those glowing eyes, its skin, the way it just vanished into thin air. Then there's the way it made my boyfriend feel. The vibration thing. How he couldn't move or scream. And those marks on his back. Like something more than just an attack happened out there. Like it could mess with something inside him. And Grand Teton. There's something about that place. You hear all those stories about people disappearing, the weird energy. What if this is connected? What if those things, those creatures, aren't just living underground? What if they're coming from somewhere else entirely? Some other world leaking into ours? I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but it's the only thing that makes sense. It's like we stumbled into one of those stories you guys cover, and now I can't shake the feeling we got lucky getting out of there at all. The whole missing people thing, the 411 cases, it makes me wonder if maybe they're not lost at all. Maybe they had an encounter like this one, and they weren't as lucky as my boyfriend. In the fall of 2016, I was hiking with my girlfriend and a rather popular state park in Kentucky, which I refuse to name, just in case this thing is still there for whatever reason. Listen, I know it's not the Grand Canyon or anything spectacular, but it seems like these kinds of things exist everywhere and you can't get rid of them. We tried to drive in, but the access road was a mess, so we parked near an old church and walked instead. Not even 10 minutes in, we hear rustling in the woods along the path. I shine my phone flashlight over, and that's when I saw it. At first, I thought it was a deer, maybe a sick one, about four feet tall. White skin so pale it almost glowed, and its body was all lean and bony, but then I got a good look at its head, a skull like something dead, and those eyes, shining yellow, staring right at us. The worst part was, they looked like a predator's eyes, not a deer's. Then this horrible, rotten smell hits us, and I see the thing shift. The skull melts away, like it was never there, and now it's got this dog-like snout it's changing shape right in front of us. That's when we bolted. I grabbed my girlfriend's hand and we ran like hell back to the car. The whole time, I could hear footsteps crunching on the gravel behind us. Whatever it was, it was following. I've never been so scared in my life. But here's the thing that really messes with me. Ever since that night, it's like, like something left a mark on me. I get these sleep paralysis episodes way more often than before, and in the dreams, I see those yellow eyes and I smell that rotting stink. Sometimes, I feel like it's still out there, watching me. This isn't some deer or coyote, it's something unnatural, evil. I need to know, has anyone else seen this thing? I know it sounds nuts, but I swear on everything this happened. 
If anyone's seen something like this, heard about a shapeshifter or anything, please let me know. I had this totally insane experience a while back that I've been dying to tell someone about. I was 19, a college kid back home for the summer, and like most broke students, I was stuck working my butt off. My dad runs this landscaping business in our town, and I mean it's tiny. The kind of place where everyone knows your name and your grandma's name. It's just the two of us, mostly. Cutting grass, pulling weeds for the rich folks in those giant houses by the lake because he can't afford to hire anyone else. Not the most exciting way to spend your break, let me tell you. Anyway, this one morning in mid-June, it was a Tuesday. I remember because garbage day is Wednesday and I hate hauling those cans. I was supposed to be helping out with some surprise birthday party my mom's friend was throwing at Lake Keese's Park later that day. But my mom, bless her heart, she can't keep a secret to save her life. So she spilled the beans the night before. And obviously, dad sent me to rake leaves and clean up the park instead. Typical dragging this rusty old rake along the walking path, sweating like a pig because it was already hot as blazes by 9am when something way up in the sky catches my eye. A silver disc. It's moving fast, probably a couple hundred feet up, and I start to get this weird feeling, like the hair on the back of my neck is standing up. Luckily, this older lady walking her poodle nearby has binoculars. Birdwatcher type, you know? She sees me staring like an idiot and offers to let me take a look. Inside the craft, clear as day, there are three creatures, not little green men like in the movies, but tall and skinny with these huge heads and giant black eyes. They were waving and grinning from behind these enormous glass windows that wrap around the whole top part. And I swear, the whole thing looked like a giant fishbowl from one of those fancy pet stores. Only, instead of goldfish, it's got freaking aliens inside. They glide overhead for a few minutes, long enough for my brain to try and catch up with what I was seeing, then vanish behind the trees on the north side of the lake. Clear blue skies, not a cloud in sight, and no trace of them. I know it sounds unbelievable, but this is exactly what I saw. I wish I'd had my phone to try and get a picture, but I was honestly too freaked out to even think about it. Thought you might find it interesting, especially since those guys on your website are always talking about the government hiding alien stuff. Honestly, before that day, I was kinda on the fence about UFOs. Sure, I loved the idea, but figured most of those sightings were probably just weird lights or people messing around. But after seeing those aliens waving at me like they were on some intergalactic field trip, that changed everything. Don't get me wrong, I'm still skeptical about half the stuff out there. There's a lot of crazies and hoaxers, for sure. But now, I can't shake the feeling that there's gotta be something more. Something we haven't even figured out yet. I mean, if three aliens can show up in my boring little town, who knows what else is out there, right? I appreciate you so much. Thanks for listening. I have always heard the call of the wilderness, something primal and untamed that tugs at you. I don't mean that in the cheesy nature lover way. It's deeper than that. A pull towards the shadows under the trees, the places the trails don't reach. Dave was the same, drawn to that quiet that feels heavy with secrets. That's probably why we never stuck to the easy, well-marked paths everyone else took. We were always looking for the hidden corners, the old, overgrown roads, places that felt forgotten. There had been other weird things before the flathead trip. Not big stuff, but enough to make you pause. Flickers of movement seen out of the corner of your eye, just gone when you turn your head. Sounds in the night that aren't quite the wind or quite an animal. That feeling, the one I try to ignore, that eyes are on you even when you're out in the middle of nowhere. People laugh it off, nerves playing tricks on you, but 
then again, some folks just don't hear that call, don't feel that prickle under their skin when they're deep in the woods. Old legends passed down from the tribes, miners' tales from the boom days, even more recent stuff, hunters vanishing, those creepy sightings of stick figures scribbled on park bathroom walls. Most folks dismiss it as campfire stories, but when you spend as much time out in those woods as Dave and I did, you start hearing the echoes in every snapping branch, every flicker of shadow. The whole car ride up to the trailhead. There was this tension hanging in the air, even though we were cracking jokes and talking about fishing holes. The sky was that flat, leaden color that promises a storm you don't want to be caught in. There wasn't wind, not really, but the trees had this nervous sway to them, like they were trying to warn us away. Should have listened to that instinct, to the feeling coiling up in my gut. Instead, we parked, strapped on our packs, and stepped onto that trail, heading straight towards something neither of us fully understood. Me and my buddy Dave, we were big into those Montana woods. Camping, fishing, whatever got us out there. One summer, we decide on an overnight in the flathead, south of Glacier. We weren't fancy about gear, tents, sleeping bags, the usual. The trailhead was where things started feeling off. Massive storm rolling down from the mountains looked like it had hit the valley at dusk, right where we were headed. Figured it'd skirt past us, but man, we were wrong. Trail was one of those narrow cuts into the hillside, switching back and forth. Dense forest, so it's like you're in this green tunnel. Got to watch your footing or you'll slip right off the edge. Clouds were moving in, getting harder to see, which didn't help. We hiked for hours, finally hit the valley floor around 6 p.m. Storm was definitely closer now, and it had shifted directly towards us. Great. Made camp near a river crossing. Good spot for water, but still exposed if the weather turned nasty. Night fell fast, those clouds thick overhead, and we could feel that something was coming. You know that feeling deep down, that prickle on your neck. Whatever it was, it was getting closer, and we were about as alone and unprepared as you could get. We made it back to the trailhead the morning after soaked to the bone and nursing what would turn into killer sunburns. Didn't speak much, just focused on putting one foot in front of the other. Got back to Dave's truck, and that's when it hit me. The silence. No birds, no insects, nothing. Dead quiet. Like the whole forest was holding its breath, waiting for something gave me shivers worse than the cold. We never found any sign of what the storm did out there. No downed trees, no obvious damage. It was like it vanished as quickly as it came. The months after were rough. I couldn't shake the feeling I was being watched even in my own apartment. Nightmares. Man, those were bad. Always dark, always the woods, and always the sense of something massive just beyond the reach of firelight. I'd wake up in a cold sweat, heart pounding, sure I could still smell that wet, rotting fur smell from whatever it was out there. Dave clammed up about the whole thing. We drifted apart after that, like the experience was something too heavy to share. It's not just me that saw stuff though. There's online forums, those with the eyes to see, figures on ridgetops vanishing as soon as you get a good look. Strange tracks that don't match any known animal, found way deeper in the woods than most folks ever go. And always, that feeling, even in the safety of your home, there's that nagging sense you're never truly alone. Maybe the part that scares me most is how much I started seeking this stuff out. Those late nights scrolling through blurry Bigfoot photos or grainy videos claiming to show something loping through the trees. Every half-heard story feels like a piece of a puzzle I can't put together. Part of me is terrified of what the answer might be, but the other part, it's that same pull of the woods, that need to know. Even now, years later, I can't shake it. 
there's a rational side to my brain that says it was the storm, the isolation, a trick of the light. But out there in the quiet of the night, when the shadows seem to shift and breathe, that flicker of doubt creeps in. Were we as alone as we thought? Did something watch us from the trees, something old and hidden and hungry? I doubt I'll ever get an answer. But that pull towards the dark places, that need to know what lurks within, that stays with me, always. I was green as grass that first summer in Yellowstone. Fresh out of college, figured waiting tables in a national park beat flipping burgers back home. Turns out, it was a whole different world. Not just the tourists, but the place itself. Wide open spaces, animals everywhere. That big sky at night felt like I could breathe for the first time in years. Of course, it wasn't all sunshine and geysers. Work was hard, hours were long, and those dorm rooms were cramped. But out on the trails, or watching the sun set over the lake, that's when the magic happened. Which makes what happened that morning even weirder. Never felt anything like it before or since. So, I worked in Yellowstone for a bunch of summers, mostly waiting tables up at Lake Hotel. One of those first seasons, I had this thing happen that still kind of bugs me. We'd be up before dawn, setting up the breakfast buffet. Kitchen crew had been there for an hour already. Us waiters were just getting the tables ready. Lake Hotel, it's got these big windows facing the water, and it was still pitch black outside. About halfway through, everything kind of went still. No talking, no clatter from downstairs, just silence. Felt off, so I head down to the lobby to check it out thinking maybe something happened. Out on the porch is when it got weird. Three bison, walking slow, maybe 20 feet away. Only thing is, they're like statues, heads straight, never look our way, just passing right by. Now, Yellowstone's full of critters. Elk, deer, even bears sometimes. That morning, just those bison. Walked off into the trees, and that was it. Went back inside, finished setup. It took longer than usual. Everyone was kind of spooked. Guests roll in for breakfast, say how much they like the food, even with us acting all dazed. Thing is, they wouldn't know any different. Couple of years later, I'd volunteered for search and rescue. Mostly, it was lost hikers, the occasional injured camper, that kind of thing. Then, one night, we got a call about a missing kid. Campsite, on the edge of the park, folks swore he vanished right out of the tent. Middle of the night, no sign of a struggle, no tracks, nothing. We combed those woods for hours. It was like he'd just dissolved into thin air. Then, right near dawn, one of the other volunteers swore he saw something move in the trees. Figured it was a deer, but when we got closer, there was this flash of light. Blinding, but gone in a second. Now, here's the weird part. We found the kid a few minutes later, curled up by a creek, fast asleep. Said he didn't remember wandering off, just that he'd been dreaming about a bright light and then felt safe. Never figured out what that light was. Some of us thought maybe a helicopter but no reports of anything flying that night. Around that same time, we had another situation. They called me in on that one because I knew the area. Old logging trail, way up in the backcountry. Hiker goes missing, experienced guy, knew the woods like the back of his hand. Search crew finds his pack a good two miles off the trail, gear scattered around like he got spooked and just ran. No sign of him though, not a trace. We spent days on that search. The dogs couldn't pick up a scent. Ground teams turned up nothing. It was like he vanished into thin air. The really strange part was the weather. Sunny and clear when he went missing. But the day we found his pack, a freak blizzard blew in. Dumped a foot of snow in a matter of hours. Wiped out any potential tracks. Never seen anything like it. Couple weeks later, 
after things calmed down, I went back out there alone. Needed to see it for myself, try to make sense of it. Hiked out to where we found his pack, and that's when it hit me. The silence. Not just quiet, but dead silent. No birds, no wind in the trees, nothing. It was unnatural, sent a shiver down my spine. That missing hiker case never got solved. Some folks say he got turned around and died of exposure. Others whisper about mountain lions, even Bigfoot sightings in that area. Me? I don't know what to believe. I've had some stranger calls as well. This one always gives me the chills. Happened near the northern border of the park, old mining town turned tourist trap. Guy goes hiking alone, doesn't come back. Search crew finds him two days later, huddled in an abandoned mine shaft, terrified out of his mind. He's covered in these weird burns, like he'd been exposed to radiation. Kept rambling about a glowing figure, said it attacked him in the woods, chased him into the mine. Doctors couldn't figure out what caused the burns, no sign of chemicals or anything like that. The guy was a mess, never fully recovered mentally. Now, get this, the park rangers, they went back to that mine, took radiation readings. One spot, deep inside, readings spiked off the charts. No explanation for it. They sealed the mine shaft off, said it was unsafe. Never released any official reports about what happened. A guy named Tom, seasoned hiker, goes missing deep in the backcountry. Search and rescue teams scour the area for two weeks, nothing. Then, out of the blue, he stumbles onto a logging road, miles from where he disappeared. He's disoriented, dehydrated, but alive. The weird part, he's wearing clothes no one recognizes, not his hiking gear, not anything anyone's seen before. And he's got this dazed look in his eyes, like he's not all there. Starts telling these stories, about being taken by aliens. Gray skin, big black eyes, the whole nine yards. Says they took him to their planet, did experiments on him, then dumped him back in the woods. Doctors couldn't find anything physically wrong with him. No drugs in his system, no signs of head trauma. Most folks wrote him off as crazy, figured he got lost, maybe had a breakdown out there in the wilderness. But a few of us, the ones who'd seen some strange things ourselves, we weren't so sure. Tom never really recovered, kept talking about his experience, got obsessed with UFOs, that kind of thing. People started avoiding him, calling him Spaceman Tom behind his back. Sad, really. Made me wonder though, what if he was telling the truth? What if there really are things out there we can't explain? Thing is, those stories, the weird ones, they weren't that rare. But most of the time, we were told to keep quiet. Rangers would brush things off, say it was animal attacks, or hikers getting turned around and dying of exposure. Easier to explain than the stuff that didn't make sense. One old timer, he'd been a ranger for decades, took me aside one night after a particularly strange call. Said the park had a whole secret file full of reports like mine. Missing people, unexplained sightings, even mutilated animal carcasses that didn't fit with any known predators. Said there was a cover-up, folks in high places making sure these things never saw the light of day. Why? He didn't know for sure. Maybe to protect tourism? Maybe something darker? Said they didn't want people looking too closely at the shadows in Yellowstone fearing what they might find. Now, I'm not one for conspiracy theories, usually. But after seeing what I saw, part of me wonders if that old-timer was right. Makes you think twice about venturing off the beaten path, about all those secrets hiding out there, just beyond the trees. Of course, it wasn't just the disappearances that made you go, hmm, there were the lights too. Strange flashes in the sky, moving too fast to be planes or satellites, mostly reported by tourists, but a few times I saw them myself. Never got a good look, 
always too far off or moving too quickly. But there was something about them, something unnatural, folks claiming to see figures in the woods, figures that didn't look quite human, tall, thin, with glowing eyes. Most dismissed it as tall tales, the kind you tell to scare newbies. But out there, alone at night, those stories crept back into your head. One time, I was on a late patrol when a call came over the radio. A group of campers swore they saw a UFO hovering over their site. By the time I got there, it was gone, of course. But those campers, they weren't the type to make things up. Look on their faces. Pure terror. Made me wonder, what if they'd seen something real? See, out in Yellowstone, with its miles of empty wilderness and those big, starry skies, you start to feel small. Makes you realize we might not be alone in this universe. And sometimes, I think maybe that's not a comforting thought at all. Look, I'm not saying I believe every wild tale I heard out there. Plenty of those stories were just that. Stories. The mind plays tricks on you in the wilderness, especially at night. Isolation, lack of sleep, it can make you see things that aren't there. But some of those experiences, those unexplained moments, they still stick with me. Make me wonder about the boundaries of what we call real. Maybe there's another layer to this world, one we only catch glimpses of out of the corner of our eye. Or maybe it's better left unexplained. I'm a big into fishing and have this cabin out in the mountains. Know the area like the back of my hand. One evening in September, I was coming back from a trip on the trail. Wasn't having any luck with the trout that day. Sunset was starting and I was feeling a bit on edge, especially after some other weird stuff I've seen out there. Anyway, I'm walking along when suddenly there's this huge flash of light above me seriously looked like lightning, but way brighter and no sound at all. Then another one and another making this crazy X in the sky. I'm totally freaked trying to figure out what's happening when this glowing white thing appears overhead. This thing, oh man, this thing was something else. Massive, easily the size of a football field, classic saucer shape, the kind you see in those old sci-fi movies. It was hovering completely silent, maybe a thousand feet up, just hanging there like it was no big deal. The whole thing was glowing, but not like a gentle glow. It was intense, almost blinding. And the surface, I think it was metal, smooth and shiny, but with these weird ripples or patterns that seemed to shift as the light hit them. No windows, no lights, nothing like that. Just this huge, seamless object floating in the middle of nowhere. It hung there for what felt like forever, but it couldn't have been more than a few minutes. I was frozen, just staring, trying to make sense of it. Then, without warning, it just shot off. Not like a plane taking off, but more like a slingshot. One second it was there, the next, poof gone. No sound, no trail, nothing. Honestly, all of this has freaked me the heck out. Tried to keep it together enough to get back to fishing. But man, you don't forget something like that. Made it hard to focus, you know? The more I thought about it, the more it started to make a weird kind of sense. You hear about those missing 411 cases all the time. People vanishing in national parks without a trace, even experienced hikers and stuff. Weather's fine, no sign of animal attacks. It's like they just disappear into thin air. Well, what if it's not thin air? I mean, I saw this thing with my own two eyes, big enough to snatch a person, silent, faster than anything I've ever seen. And who knows what else they're capable of, right? makes you wonder if maybe some of those missing people aren't missing at all. Maybe they're somewhere else entirely. I know it sounds crazy, like something out of the X-Files or whatever, but after what I saw, I'm not so sure anymore. 
And because you guys made it this far into the episode, I want you to all comment down below right now, there is something in the woods. So that way I know who made it to the very end and well, who did not. And if you guys enjoyed content like this, you know, where I'm telling stories about eyewitness accounts of strange supernatural things happening, not just in the woods, but national parks and all around the country, you know, those sorts of creepy things, go ahead and smack that like and subscribe button and I will see all of your beautiful faces in the very next video. Until then.